Hello everybody, this is Dr Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue looking at streams and flooding. So in this video we're going to think about what happens in the headwaters of streams and this is going to correspond to section 16.6 .6 of your textbook. So in this slide here we can see we have an image which is representative of the headwaters of a river. So obviously we know our river has to have some kind of source and the source of a river is variable. It could be simply rainwater, it could be melting ice and snow, or it could be a spring exiting onto the surface of the earth. Any of those are you know, valid sources from which a river can begin to form. Now in this particular model what we're going to do is we're simply going to discuss a model which is primarily based on the movement of water across the surface of the earth, so mostly due to rain. Now in this particular model what we have is a situation where we have an area of the earth's surface which is being hit by rainwater and this causes what's referred to as splash erosion. So this is when we have relatively loosely consolidated material being hit by raindrops and the impact of the raindrop is enough to very slowly erode away material over time. Now, what will tend to happen is uh, you can it will tend to form relatively weak depressions on the surface. Now this means that if there is some kind of source of water such as precipitation or melting ice or groundwater it will naturally begin to focus itself along these depressions because it's the path of least resistance. So what's going to happen is, is the uh, these small channels and cracks which open up due to erosion are going to begin to accumulate water. Uh, that's simply because these cracks will form natural low spots and the water will therefore naturally congregate in that region. Now over time what's going to happen is these cracks are going to start joining together and so you're going to end up with a slightly larger volume of water. So you're going to be concentrating your flow. And once you have a concentrated flow of water, now we're only talking a very small stream here, we're not talking a mighty river yet, the, your small stream will have the capacity to begin to erode. And once your river can begin to erode, be it through physical erosion, so you know bits of rock bouncing off each other, or be it through a process such as dissolution, so dissolving rock, what will happen is you will begin to slowly over time make your channel larger. And as your channel becomes larger, obviously it means you will have the capacity to gather more water into that channel, so the river itself, the stream, will also begin to become larger. Now, what's going to happen is over time, you're going to have several of these streams joining together and they're going to supply enough water to form a single large channel. And this single large channel is going to continue to flow downhill under gravity. Okay, so as you can see, it's a relatively straightforward process. It's just a process of building up essentially small cracks which will then combine their water to make small streams. Small streams become larger streams and these larger streams combine together to end up forming a single large river. So the process itself isn't that difficult to understand. So what kind of landforms do we commonly find in headwater environments? So most headwaters tend to be in environments where we have topography. So we're going to be in mountainous or very hilly terrain. Now, why is this? Well, it just so happens that these areas of elevated terrain are very often the kinds of location where we get very, very high rates of precipitation. And so these elevated areas often have lots of rain falling on them during the spring and summer months. And that rain or precipitation will fall during the fall and winter in the form of ice and snow, which will be incorporated into glaciers, which will then melt partially during the spring, releasing the water into the system. So these areas are very, very water rich. Now, another, re another thing which we find in these areas is because you have uh, layers of rock which are being moved up and down relative to each other due to tectonic forces, it means you will have permeable layers of rock which maybe will take water on over here and the permeable layer of rock will transport the water underground via an aquifer and it will appear, let's say, here. And so these areas of elevated terrain, these mountainous areas and hilly areas are also very, very rich in springs. And of course, a spring is one of the possible sources from which a river can form. 
So in these areas of elevated terrain, what kind of landforms do we find? Well, one of the things which is relatively common is waterfalls. So we've already touched on how if you have layers of rock which are more difficult to erode, it will naturally form a barrier which the river will find difficult to erode through. Now, underneath these hard to erode layers of rock, what you can have are softer layers of rock. And so what happens is, as the water comes down, it moves across the difficult to erode layer, and then it continues and starts to move across the easy to erode layer. And so what will happen is, is the river will slowly begin to erode away this more easily eroded material here, whilst the more robust layer of rock here will erode at a much slower rate. And so what will happen is you will end up forming a lip of tough rock here, and underneath it you will end up forming a region which is being actively eroded. And so this lip essentially will become a waterfall. The water will continue across the hard to erode rock. It will come to the lip and then it will fall down under gravity into the area of erosion belief, which we refer to as the waterfall pool or the plunge pool. And so we can, we can see in these areas we are very likely to have waterfalls forming because tectonic forces will very often mean that robust layers of rock will be exposed at the surface of the earth and so this can lead to the formation of waterfalls. Another thing which we tend to find in these headwater environments are rapids and this is the result of the steep gradient. So because we have a steep gradient, the water is dropping very, very quickly, and that obviously means it's going to be very energetic. So the water moving along these river valleys here is on the whole going to be very, very energy rich. And because this water has so much energy, it has the capacity to move a broad range of class sizes, everything from very, very small clay size class all the way up to boulders. And so what you're going to end up with in these channels here is a river sediment which is extremely coarse. You're going to have lots of boulders, lots of cobbles, lots of gravel, lots of sand. And because you have all these obstructions in your channel, it means the flow of water is going to be extremely turbulent in these segments. And these turbulent segments of water produced by a buildup of very large class are of course referred to as rapids. And so it's not uncommon to find rapids forming in headwater areas due to the gradient. It's also not uncommon to find the formation of mountain lakes within areas of elevated terrain. So this is because it's it's pretty easy actually to, for your water to find itself getting trapped in an area where there is some kind of obstruction. And obviously if there is some kind of obstruction, water will begin to build up behind it. And if the depression is large enough, it will end up forming a lake. And you can see one forming right here. So this area, this ridge in front of it is probably the obstruction that the water can't get past yet. The water's probably coming in from this, uh, this side here, entering the lake. So the lake is filling up with water and it will eventually if when, when it fills up enough it will eventually manage to escape and it will the water will exit into the main channel here you'll notice uh, that the main channel itself oh, didn't mean to do that you'll notice that the main channel itself here is a braided river system and this is consistent with the types of rivers we would expect to get in these areas of elevated terrain so we tend to have lots of water which is quite energetic with a very large amount of sediment and that will lead to the formation of a braided river system all right thank you for watching everybody and have a good day